Hello and welcome to Skip to the Gay Parts. My name is Amanda, I'm your host, and in this show, we're going to take a queer character from any show in all of television and spend a week or two sometimes dissecting everything that's queer about them, whether or not it was canon. And this week, our very first episode, all I could think to do was start with Dean Winchester, bisexual disaster. Now, admittedly, I am deeply in the throes of a Supernatural rewatch, so that is why Dean Winchester is at the top of my mind. But this first big chunk of episodes is going to be exclusively characters from Supernatural because it is the queerest homophobic show I have ever watched in my entire life. And we deserve to spend a couple of hours going through exactly what makes it as queer as it is. And who better to start with than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dean Winchester. So let's jump right into it. Supernatural is a show that, in the beginning, was aimed toward young men who liked ghost stories and adventure. That was the target demographic. In fact, Sam and Dean were based on characters from Jack Kerouac's On the Road. A bit of that reference remaining throughout the series in its flashbacks at the beginning of new seasons called On the Road So Far. It's the beginning of every recap and it's a little bit of On the Road that got to stay in the show throughout the series. And much like the original printing of Jack Kerouac's On the Road, it was marketed towards young men. But as much of the Supernatural fandom has found out by now, the original version of On the Road, the character Dean Moriarty, that Dean is based on, is in the in the 1950s version, a womanizer and a playboy. And that was not in the original manuscript. No, in fact, the original manuscript, which was released in 2000 without all the censored moments of the 1950s version, it actually revealed that Dean Moriarty's character is bisexual. You know, the character Dean was based on. That's a neat fun fact, isn't it? Anyway, back to Supernatural itself. Again, it's made clear in the early seasons that the show is aimed at young men. That is who Eric Kripke and the other writers of the show wanted the show to reach. And for the most part, it did. As a matter of fact, my brother is the person that introduced me to the show a couple of seasons in. But through the years, the demographic shifted no matter how much they tried to fight it. And maybe it was because of the eye candy that Jensen and Jared provided, or women who knew things like Jared from Gilmore Girls and followed him into his new project just to see more of what then Dean on Gilmore Girls, he calls himself the original Dean, but now Sam on Supernatural, is doing in his new project. And so eventually, throughout the years, Supernatural acquired a heavily female and a, a massively queer audience. And within its fan base, queer Dean Winchester found a home. It all started with one simple sentence. Dad's on a hunt and he hasn't been home in a few days. And just like that, Dean Winchester had our attention. So before we jump into how queer Dean Winchester is, let's talk about queer coding and what queer coding is. Now, I'm not going to take you through an entire academic spiel about queer coding. I'm just going to give you a simple definition. It is the subtextual portrayal of a queer character in the media whose identity is not explicitly confirmed with canon. This concept refers to a character that encapsulates what might be considered queer traits that are recognizable to the audience but are never labeled or claimed by the content creator. Sound familiar? Now, I have been a Supernatural fan for years, and after the season 15 finale, thanks in part to the resurgence of the fan base on TikTok and the fact that we are living in the years that time forgot, I have found myself particularly invested in the show once again. So obviously, it was time for a season one, episode one, complete series rewatch. And what have I found on that rewatch? There is absolutely no heterosexual excuse for almost anything at all about Dean Winchester. And I want to say that if someone asks, why do you think Dean Winchester is bi? And your answer is, because I said so, that's enough. You don't have to provide proof. If you, a queer viewer, think that a character is queer, they simply are. And the show then has to prove to you that they aren't. That's the rule I live by. That's the rule. That's the rule of this show. If you think a character is queer, guess what? They're queer. Sorry about it. They're ours now. Uh, now, please bear with me as the queer observations I make about Dean won't necessarily be in chronological order. I'll jump around a little bit as they happen in the series. I'm also going to try and focus on all that is Dean with hopes of circling back to Castiel at another time because that beautiful gay angel deserves his own episode. He deserves so much more than he has ever received. But for now, let's give voice to the man who was silenced and let's talk a little bit more about Dean Winchester. For 15 years, the fan base of Supernatural has been saying that Dean Winchester is a queer man. The majority of people agreeing that he is in fact bisexual. And for 15 years, 
the writers and creators of the show have been looking at us, the fans, in our eyes and saying they have absolutely no idea what we are talking about and that we are crazy. Even after taking our observations and rubbing them in our faces in the show for the sake of comic relief. Well, as I've been doing this rewatch and I've been documenting every queer moment I can find on my TikTok and just screaming into the wind how obvious it is, a lot of you have joined me. As a matter of fact, by the time I'm taping this, about 10,000 of you have joined me, which is insane. But I welcome the fellow queers analyzing and loving on Dean Winchester. And I actually extended a question to the fan base on TikTok, asking you to send me videos of your favorite by Dean Winchester moment or just what by Dean Winchester means to you. So stay tuned to the end of the episode to see if your voice made the cut. I'm so sorry if I didn't get to everybody. Some things were just clips of the episode that I don't have the rights to play on here, but I saw every single one of your stitches. I appreciate them. And I will absolutely give you a shout out at the end of the episode. Now let's be very clear. Dean's queer traits did not start and stop with the introduction of Castiel, his longtime speculated love interest. Again, more on him later. In fact, Dean's queerness is peppered throughout the early seasons, getting more and more blatant as time went on and as he broke away from the heteronormative life full of toxic masculinity instilled in him by John Winchester, including, but not limited to, Dean's obsession with things like cowboy movies, James Dean, professional wrestling, and many, many other things that at first glance just seem to be baseline masculine, but are actually some of the most wildly queer-coded pieces of media to ever exist. A small example of this is when Dean makes a Cool Hand Luke reference later on in season 12, the reference being what we have here is a failure to communicate. Cool Hand Luke is a Paul Newman film, and as my Queering the Media professor Harry Haynes will attest, there is not a single film Paul Newman has ever made that did not have queer themes. Most mostly because Paul Newman was rumored to be bisexual, presumably hooking up with other big manly men stars like, that's right, James Dean. Now before we go ahead and jump into the canon receipts of bisexual Dean Winchester, let's get to the root of his repression, shall we? Mr. John Terrible Dad Winchester, come on down. So it is known that because of what happened to Mary and how John raised them, Dean has to pretty much raise Sam all on his own. He never got to be a child and he never got to mess around and make stupid mistakes without facing horrible consequences from his father. That paired with how we saw John raise him through flashbacks throughout the series with all of his inflicting emotional trauma, it is wildly speculated that he also laid his hands on at least Dean when he got too angry. This is proven in moments like when Dean was 16 and had bruises on his arm that he claimed were from a werewolf, even though we learned in early seasons that he did not hunt a werewolf for the first time until after that. Also in the early seasons, when Dean and Sam were hopping around each other's heavens, Dean reveals that after Sam left the family, Dean was the one that bore the brunt of their father's wrath. Additionally, in season 10, when Dean is grappling with the effects of the mark of Cain, he confronts an abusive father with a stone expression saying he can smell the beatings that pervade this home. My reaction to that? That is some sp- Spicy trauma projection there, Dino. And hey, remember when Dean knew his father was possessed by a demon because John was being nice and that was wildly out of character? Yeah, me too. Again, it is never said explicitly that John laid his hands on the boys, but the trauma in Dean's face when that information is revealed says all that it needs to say. Oh, and who can forget the journal? In the infamous John Winchester Journal, a published bit of material from the supernatural canon, there are so many subtextual hints that John is trying to toughen Dean up when he's getting too soft, including sending him on a solo hunt for his 17th birthday to take care of the ghost of two lesbian nuns. Again, it is wildly speculated that this is in retaliation after John discovers Dean with Lee, a character we will meet in season 15 who was clearly an old boyfriend of Dean's. Again, more on him later. So the trauma John inflicts not only contributes to Dean's repressed queer feelings, but it also contributes to another queer trope of not getting to have a childlike teenage phase of life until well into adulthood when you're starting to work your way free of parental suppression. In case it's not being made clear, This is not a John Winchester apologist safe space. All my homies hate John Winchester. All of the nonverbal proof of queer Dean, all of the facial expressions and the micro expressions of queer Dean is because of the acting of the marvelous Jensen Ackles and his facial jacking Joyce's. Like I said, the evidence of queer Dean is peppered throughout the early seasons. It's just ramped up more after season four at the introduction of Castiel. One of the more subtle early moments is an episode in season two where the boys are at a haunted hotel and Sam points out that the desk clerk believed the two of them to be a gay couple 
because Dean was pretty butch and seemed like he might be overcompensating for something. And it's small and it's subtle, but there's a quiet moment in the way Dean reacts to that accusation that is not heterosexual. There's no other way to describe it. It's a small nod and a quiet yeah and a moment of lingering silence, giving the viewer and Dean a second to think. Again, a subtle moment, but absolutely a crumb that the queer fan base has picked up on. In another early episode, Dean is presented with a siren, a creature that takes the form of a thing you truly want, whatever the guy is into, as Dean words it. It should be noted that every other time we see the siren in this episode, it takes the form of a sexual or romantic want of its victim. And then when it goes after Dean, is an attractive 20-something man in a strapping suit who likes old cars and classic rock. There's a throwaway line later in the episode that the siren was trying to take the form of a brother for Dean, but it feels more like a last-ditch attempt to no homo the whole situation. Again, every other depiction of the siren in this episode was of a sexual or romantic temptation. Why would it suddenly change for Dean Winchester? The writers even openly mocked the fandom's reaction to the homoerotic nature of the first four seasons by going meta and making the supernatural books about Sam and Dean a thing in the series, including a convention for them where they had a panel titled The Homoerotic Nature of Supernatural. Of course, it was done to mostly mock the fans because let's be honest, the actors show us they love us while the writers and creators show us the opposite of that. And just like they were trying to reach an all male audience, the entire convention quote unquote that was in that episode was mostly men. They were trying to stay away from the female audience that they had been attracting so much that they wrote the male audience into the show. However, there is a quiet moment at the end of that episode where Dean is talking to a supernatural fan who cosplays as Dean at the conventions. And again, probably as a joke to the people who ship Wincest, which is not a ship that is in any way supported on this podcast, we can talk about Dean being queer-coded without making it weird and shipping him with his own brother. But Dean learns that this man who cosplays as Dean um, and a man who cosplays as Sam are actually a gay married couple. And again, this moment could have been played off as nothing but a joke, but there's a stretch of time in the next shot where we see Dean, where he is leaning against baby, smiling to himself, clearly thinking about what he's just gone through. And when Sam asks Dean how he's doing, Dean says he's actually great because Dean has just met a person who idolizes Dean, who thinks highly of his masculinity and his heart and the things that make him who he is. And that person is also a proud gay man. And suddenly, Dean feels better than he has in a long time. I'm not saying there's a connection, but I am. I'm saying there's a connection. The writers can rip the significance of Dean's smile in that moment from my cold, dead hands. Some other small moments that make Dean non-heterosexual nature shine through are as follows. There's a scene where Dean and Sam are hunting a man who is using witchcraft to keep himself looking young. And in that episode, Dean lifts up the man's sheet to quote unquote, look for a birthmark on the man's naked body, even though they had the man's ID in their hands and knew exactly who he was. What was the point of that if not for queer purposes? And then in the French Mistake episode where Dean meets the fictional Dr. Sexy, a supernatural spoof of McDreamy on Grey's Anatomy, he gets visibly nervous to even speak to him. That's him. That's Dr. Sexy, Dean says nervously. You know, the way people get around their crushes. And this nervous crush energy is only highlighted by the fact that Sam is standing there next to Dean, being very matter of fact, and not flustered in the slightest to be around this incredibly dreamy looking man. And Dean only notices that Dr. Sexy is an imposter because he is not wearing the cowboy boots that make Dr. Sexy sexy. Special thanks to my TikTok friend Lainey for pointing that one out. And that theme repeats throughout the series. Like when a man says he was following Dean because they had felt a spark of connection and Dean Winchester, known playboy, is so flustered about being flirted with that he trips over a table and loses all of his cool. Classic bisexual disaster. At no point in that interaction, by the way, does he say he's not interested in men or that he's not interested in that man that's following him. On the contrary, he just rejects the flirting by saying he was busy working. And he even brings it up later in the episode when the man says he was lying and he actually was following Dean because of the case. And Dean seems visibly bummed about it. Additionally, he has a lesbian friend, patron Saint Charlie, who deserves her own episode, that at one point she needs to flirt with a male security guard to get into an office and says she can't do that. She's not into men. It's not going to be possible. So Dean says, not to worry, I can help. And he feeds her what to say through an earpiece. And he is way too good at that to have never flirted with a man before. If not being able to flirt with a man was Charlie's problem, and it isn't a problem for Dean, 
We're just supposed to ignore that that means that Dean knows how to flirt with men. Interesting. Absolutely noted. There are members of the fan base who say that the early indications we all saw of Dean's queerness were actually moments that the straight writers, writing for a straight demographic, are trying to play off as a man being uncomfortable with homoerotic situations. But they should have let their actor in on that joke because except for a few moments where Dean doth protest too much and says he doesn't swing that way, Jensen played these moments in a very different way. A way that even in the own writer's words, in that season where Dean was being flirted with by a man and he got all flustered, said that Jensen played it down the middle and left the room for the potential of love anywhere. Back to early seasons. In the end of season three, there's a particularly poignant and well-timed phrase uttered by one of the ghost facer characters after a gay member of their team is killed and as a ghost helps take down the episode's big bad. The ghost facers wrap up the episode with the quote, gay love can pierce through the veil of death and save the day. And that was mere episodes before the beginning of season four and the introduction of the angel who gripped Dean tight and raised him from perdition, Angel of the Lord, Castiel. Now Cass's introduction really took any queer coding of Dean and kicked it into high gear. Though again, as I said earlier, Dean's queerness is not restricted to his relationship with Castiel. Their interactions just helped illustrate his queerness even more. From the very moment that Cass gripped Dean tight and raised him from perdition, there were queer tones in Cass and Dean's relationship. These two have a tendency, even from the beginning, to have all of their heated conversations about two inches from each other's faces. And Jensen and Misha even said at a fan convention that it was written into the script that these moments of their staring heatedly in each other's eyes was written, scripted, and then they eye fuck. But with queerness, especially involving religious storyline, comes homophobia. It's even said in a later episode in a line that sounds completely ripped from Conversion Therapy Handbook that the very touch of Dean corrupts. The very minute Cass laid a hand on him in hell, he was lost. There's even further proof that, quote unquote, God doesn't approve of Dean and Cass's relationships in the story, because according to the prophet Chuck, author of the Supernatural books later revealed to be God, in season four, episode 22, Cass and Dean aren't even supposed to be in that part of the story, to which Cass says they're making it up as they go. The first indication that Cass is the only thing in Dean's life that was not written and planned out by Chuck. Much like the actual show who kept trying to write Cass off and keep him and Dean apart no matter how many times it failed. Cass and Dean's relationship was the embodiment of the free will that Dean was fighting for along with the rest of team free will for the entire series. And Cass and Dean's profound bond that connects them coupled with the chemistry between Jensen and Misha and their acting choices just made this pairing an obvious one. No matter how much the creators of the show tried to tell us otherwise, it was there. Every time Dean loses hope and prays to his guardian angel, Cass is there in an instant. And it's so intimate and it's so personal that it usually ends up with Cass and Dean, again, nose to nose, making promises to stand by each other's side no matter what happens. There is even a scene in season four in the episode The Levy Breaks where Castiel asks a desperate Dean to swear himself to the service of heaven whenever they call on him in exchange for help with Sam. And the wording of that scene and the way it was blocked and the way it was shot, it reads like a wedding. I dare you to watch that scene again, again at the end of When the Levee Breaks in season four. I dare you to watch that scene and not think about an exchanging of vows because that was a wedding. And anytime Dean feels vulnerable and prays to Cass and Cass doesn't answer, the absence in the room is profound, and the disappointment in Dean's face never fails to break your heart. Again, Jensen jacking choices. And even more heartbreaking than all the unanswered prayers, every time Cass dies. Because on Supernatural, everybody dies and nobody stays dead. Every time Castiel dies, you can see Dean have an entire breakdown. Even in the brief moments, like at the end of season five, when Cass only dies for a few minutes, Dean also loses Bobby and Sam and for a moment is completely and totally alone. He collapses to the ground, physically and mentally broken, only for Cass to be his salvation. He literally steps into Dean's light and heals his wounds, even giving him back the only father figure that has ever mattered, Bobby, alive and well. Season six includes Dean getting into relationship with an old flame, Lisa, a woman we met in a previous season who has a son, Ben, that I am still not convinced is not Dean's. Because Dean made a promise to Sam in season five that when Sam died at the end of season five, Dean would try to lead a normal life, give up hunting, settle down, and try to be happy. And Dean does seem genuinely happy with Lisa and Ben. Being a dad figure looks great on him because he'd already raised Sam. He was already a dad. But the minute he discovers that Sam is alive, 
he's back to hunting. And throughout that season, we see Dean reunite with a soulless Sam and grapple with balancing being a hunter and protecting Lisa and Ben. Again, being queer coded does not exclude him from being in a happy relationship with a woman because that is what bisexuality means. And though that relationship ends with Dean making them forget he ever existed via Cass, it only further cemented his want and need for a family. And him splitting up with Lisa and jumping right into his deep connection with Cass and all the betrayal he feels from Cass lying to him that whole season reads so incredibly romantic in the final climax of the season. It feels like when your partner is lying to you. That is how it reads. That is how it came across. The tension and betrayal and being cast out of one's chosen family between Cass and Dean reads as inherently queer. The idea of chosen family is an inherently queer idea. Not in all families, but in a great majority of queer situations, when people come out and are proudly standing as themselves, being cast out of your family is just kind of part of the deal sometimes. It is tragic and it's horrible and thankfully it doesn't happen as much anymore, but it still happens. So queer people having a chosen family is just kind of par for the course. And so the chosen family themes of this show read as queer. And this betrayal by Castiel, his chosen family, is highlighted in moments in the season six finale and the season seven premiere, but is most memorable when Dean fishes Cass's iconic jacket out of the lake and clutches it to himself. A jacket that Dean carries with him in the trunk of his car all season. Which is made more significant by the fact that in the seventh season, Dean has to hide away the iconic Impala to lay low from law enforcement and has to change cars all season. So he has to transfer that jacket from car to car. And when he discovers Cass alive and well, but without any memory of himself, Dean presents it to him as a token of the Cass he knew. And again, I say, Dean's queerness is not inherently tied to Cass. And there is no bigger proof of that than in season eight, Dean's trip to purgatory and the introduction of his vampire boyfriend, Benny. Now, again, it had been a hot minute since I had seen season eight. So I feel I could say with some degree of certainty that even jumping into the series cold, there is almost no way to look at Dean and Benny and the relationship they develop in purgatory and not see a romantic storyline. Even Benny's opening lines to Dean are said in a flirtatious way. Maybe you like being man meat for every Tom, Dick, and Harry in this place. After Benny saves Dean from almost being killed by a monster in purgatory. And when Dean calls Benny's need for a way out of purgatory, hitching a ride on the soul train, Benny responds, sure, if that's what you're into. Blatant flirting in their first interaction that does not let up in any future interactions. Throughout the season, we get flashes to Purgatory, and later in the season, Dean reflects that being in Purgatory felt pure and light. He got to be the pure hunter and fighter he has always been, but with no restraints. He gets to risk it all to save Cass while forming a bond with Benny along the way. Dean is unrestrained in all senses of the word in Purgatory. His instincts are on fire, he and Benny are monster fighting. He's a machine. And when he reunites with Cass, which is his driving force, he could have left Purgatory much earlier, but he needed, he demanded that he find Cass and not leave without him. And so when he sees Cass again, he throws his arms around the angel and flat out refuses to leave Purgatory without him, even if traveling with him was dangerous. So when at the last second at the gates of Purgatory, Cass slips through Dean's fingers, that loss and that pain and that grief hangs heavy on Dean's shoulders the entire rest of the season. And again, throughout season eight, the romance with Benny continues. And with it came a little bit of anti-vampire moments with Sam that really read as just homophobic parallels. They're barely subtle. Up to this point, we had never seen Dean trust a monster all that much. But every time Benny calls, Dean is right there to ride with him. And it's always in secret, sneaking away to answer the phone or only giving Sam half-truths about where he was when he was with Benny. You know, like a closeted person trying to hide their partner from their family because they're not out yet. At one point, when Sam forces Dean to confront the monster that Benny is on a case and that Benny might have been involved in some of the killings, Dean stands at Benny's defense adamant that Benny would never betray his trust. He says, and I quote, every relationship I have ever had has gone to crap at some point. But the one thing I can say about Benny is that he has never let me down. Relationship. He said the word relationship. Every relationship I have ever had. Is that word ambiguous in a general context? Sure. 
But that specific mention is so clearly about Dean's recently failed relationship with Lisa, and yes, his relationship with Cass, who he is still mourning the loss of, among countless others. And again, the writers try to walk it back to make it like a connection to his brotherly relationship with Sam, but that is simply not how it reads. And the parallels to Dean's relationships with Benny and Sam's relationship with Amelia in season eight are blatant even in future dialogue. In one episode, Dean sends Sam on a wild goose chase to his ex-girlfriend to divert Sam away from Benny and to keep Benny safe. And when Sam finds out, this is how the conversation goes. Sam asks, is that where we are? You saved a vampire by making me believe that the woman I love might be dead? Samuel Winchester, I need you to take two and two. I need you to make them make four. Because why exactly would Dean put all of that effort in to protect Benny the way you would protect the woman you love? Not only that, they have not one, not two, but three phone calls and scenes that if you just showed them to someone completely out of context of the show, they would say, oh, that's a breakup. Benny and Dean are having a breakup. The last of which goes, Dean saying, everything you've done for me, I will never forget. But this is it. End of the line. You stay good, all right? Adios. The fact that this is a breakup has even been confirmed. Later in the season, in the episode LARP and the Real Girl, Dean has a moment with Charlie, lesbian nerd queen, where they are discussing Sam getting over his breakup with Amelia, and she assesses Dean's mood and asks, are you also going through a breakup? The version that made the show has him saying no, but Jensen jacking Joyce's and the way his face reads in that scene doth protest a little much. But an early draft of the script has been leaked, where, in parentheses, before Dean says no, it said yes. With one simple line they could have confirmed by Dean, and they took it away. For what? Though it's worth mentioning that they took confirmation of his queerness out of a scene where he is literally in a Queen's Night LARPing costume looking, objectively, the most bisexual he has ever looked in the entire history of the series, while gabbing with his gay best friend. And his queerness and relationship issues resurface again in the season when he finds Castiel again alive and well. And not only in small moments like seeing Cass all cleaned up and having a visual gulping, shifting in his seat reaction paired with a shot that literally scans up Cass's body like it would for a love interest entering a room in any rom-com at all. But also in bigger scenes, like when they get to talking again about all of Dean's guilt over not being the one to pull Cass out of purgatory, which results in a number of scenes that sound like a couple in the throes of a huge fighting for us style fight, including lines like, I did everything I could to get to you, everything, I did not leave you. I do not need to feel like hell for failing you for failing you like I've failed every other godforsaken thing I've ever cared about. And at the end of season eight, we see Cass's storyline coming to a head, him being used as a weapon against Dean in a scene that flashes from Cass taking orders in heaven to Cass holding Dean by the neck on his knees, beating the life out of him. Not only is queerness used in the set design of this scene, the otherwise all white office space that is heaven lit up in the bi flag colors on the wall, pink, purple, and blue gradient lining the wall, but Dean, barely fights back against Cass and just begs him to stop, opens himself up to be vulnerable and beg Cass to snap out of what was controlling him, that he needs Cass. And again, the script and what made it to the screen are different here. Cass, I love you was originally scripted, but it was changed to Cass, I need you by Jensen because realistically it does feel like that's what Dean would need to express. Dean has never needed anybody not even his own father, but in that moment, he needed Cass. And that does it. No matter how much Naomi barked at Cass, Dean begging on his knees for Cass to come back to himself, Cass snaps out of it. But just for a moment afterwards, when Dean doesn't see the internal change yet, Cass brings his hand to Dean's face, and Dean, more broken than we have ever seen him, asks Cass to please please not do this. And when Cass instead heals all of Dean's wounds, Dean sounds on the verge of tears, finally realizing that Cass had stopped and wondering what the hell just happened. This scene right here, season eight in its entirety, is what cemented it for me. There was no way to go through that entire season, no way to get through that scene with Dean and Cass and not see the romance that the writers put there, by accident or on purpose. Season eight was a breakthrough moment that colored every single moment after it. There was no walking it back after that. This was officially a love story. Just as the show was getting to this apex of queerness, just as it was getting so blatant 
that they scripted out an I love you in that moment. They decided to go full homophobic with it. It was time again to spend a season leading up to Dean's death. It was time to push him from being a good and righteous man with a deep love and affection for both his family and for this angel who loved him right back, the world saver that is Dean, into the villain that all queer people get treated as. It was time for Dean to go full demon. Thank you all for listening to part one of this dissection of Dean Winchester. Please tune in next time as I dive in to the back half of the series, because it only gets more queer from here. But as promised, I'm not going to end this episode until I get to share some of the videos that you guys sent me about what bisexual Dean Winchester means to you. This is either going to make perfect sense or it's not going to make any sense at all, but it almost doesn't make sense for Dean to be anything but bisexual. And it's directly linked to the way that Dean is characterized. He's not characterized as someone who follows social norms. Nothing about Dean really fits into like the social normalcy. His car, even though it's a it's a classic muscle car, was not popular until after Supernatural started airing. His jewelry choices are still not normal. Like he's got he wears like a big silver ring, and the amulet that he wears is not one that you see regularly. He also does not care what other people think about him, except for John. Like, that's the only person he cares what they think of him. Even Sam, to an extent, he does not care, and yet you make that character straight, it doesn't make any sense. And having it canonically by Dean Winchester is just really important to me, because I see a lot of my trauma in Dean, and the show helped me when I was living in a really terrible situation. So seeing myself reflected so fully in one of my comfort characters in my number one comfort show was really important to me as a kid, and it continues to be really important to me now. There's just not a lot of good bi representation in media, and there's really no queer representation in media where their character's queerness is not the focal point of their character. We're more than just our queer identity, and it's really nice to actually see that. I didn't come out until I was 26 years old, and the reason I came out was because of Dean Winchester. It was so much easier to see his bisexuality on the screen and acknowledge it than it was my own. But once I saw that, I was able to acknowledge it for myself. You just heard the voices of TikTok user J underscore K underscore 2004, TikTok user at nesjessupremacy.co.uk, TikTok user at SAGate, and special thanks to everybody else that stitched with my video, such as TikTok user WLW Dean Winchester, TikTok user Hi Dancy. TikTok user at Rachel Denny at Plat Deja Amber. So sorry if I mispronounced that. At the Laney Rose at Shanto Six Ten at Netch underscore Pacheco. So sorry if I mispronounced that. At Fandom Quill Cosplay at Tamietti at the Literal Trash at Wayward Sun Fifteen O Five at Panganator at Athena dot and at Quit Being Banished. Thank you so much again for stitching with my video. I watch every single one of them. I included as many as I could. And I welcome even more for when part two of this episode goes up. Because we've only got through season eight. We've got so much farther to go. Also, thank you to TikTok users such as OXOX, Sarah XOXO, and Hufflepuff Hunter, whose rewatches inspired my Supernatural rewatch and whose content I thoroughly enjoy every single day. You should all go follow them. And also, to cite my sources, I'd also like to thank TikTok user at alison.org, who sent me a PowerPoint that she made for Supernatural. I also used supernatural.fandom.com for my research, as well as just a rewatch of the show in general. I'm very excited for all of you to join me as I go through the rest of the queer receipts that are in seasons 9 through 15 of Supernatural. Oh boy, is it a doozy. Stay tuned for part two. If you would like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, my Instagram is at AbnormalAmanda18. My Twitter is at AbnormalAmanda. My TikTok is at AbnormalAmanda underscore 18. If you'd like to follow the show on Instagram or Twitter, the show's Instagram is at Skip to the Gay Parts Pod, and the show's Twitter is at Skip to the Gay Parts. Thank you for joining me. I'm happy to have you all along the ride. Let's pick a character, let's pick a show, and let's skip to the gay parts.